it's me Amari Jazz welcome back to my YouTube channel in today's video we're going to be talking about Azalea Banks versus Renaissance we're also going to be taking a deep dive into Azalea Banks and her discography her musical style how that ties into house music house music development as well as ballroom culture the origin of ballroom culture how that ties into the house music as well as talking about renaissance its cultural phenomenon the impact that it has on house music ballroom culture and the lgbt community so if all those things interest you stick around for more don't forget to like comment and subscribe and turn the category is Azalea Banks was born in Harlem in 1991 to two older sisters and a mother who worked long hours at a retail store on 57th Street. Her father died of pancreatic cancer when she was two, and in the only mental image she has left of him, he is lying in a casket. My mother became really abusive, physically and verbally, like she would hit me and my sisters with baseball bats, bang our heads up against walls, and she would always tell me I was ugly. I remember once she threw out all the food in the fridge just so we wouldn't have anything to eat. That's why I sound like a Dominican, she says, because I was raised by Dominican caretakers. My mom would throw them a couple thousand dollars and just disappear for five weeks. Her mother never told her where she was going, never gave an explanation. I would just be in my head like, does my mother not want me anymore? Is she coming back? Is she alive? She also developed her musicality in part because of her mother, who, when she was around, would do chores around the house naked while listening to Rochelle Farrell, Shaka Khan, Donna Summer, and Whitney Houston. Banks was 10 when her mother was diagnosed with schizophrenia, but their relationship was volcanic long before that. She had to grow quickly in a home where she was forced to develop a kind of emotional armor. She would brag about how she did witchcraft and killed my father, says Banks. On mornings when she had to ride the bus to school after physical altercations, she would listen to Destiny's Child's happy face and do her best to stop crying so the social workers wouldn't put her in foster care. By 14, when she began studying at LaGuardia, she had moved out of her mother's home and in with one of her sisters. At a young age, Banks became interested in musical theater, dancing, acting, and singing. At 16, she starred in a production of the comedy noir musical City of Angels, where she was found by an agent who sent her to auditions for TBS, Nickelodeon, and Law and & Order, all without success. At this point, Banks decided to end her pursuit of an acting career, citing the stuff citing the stiff competition and overall sense of non-fulfillment. Because of this lack of fulfillment, she began writing rap and R&B songs as a creative outlet. She never finished high school, instead choosing to follow her dream of becoming a recording artist. I just started rapping because I had some boyfriend who rapped, and all his friends rapped too, she says, and I thought it was so cool. Writing rhymes became an outlet into which she could funnel her dissatisfaction with the acting career that wasn't materializing. I would always come and try to butt into their cipher, and it would be some whack-ass shit. They would just snatch the blunt out of my hand and skip me. And I would say to myself, one day, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get all y'all niggas. Banks has said she admires and was inspired to make music by artists such as American recording artists Beyonce and Aaliyah, calling her, she is the most remarkable performer and musician. And this is just my humble opinion, but I just think she's better than everyone else making music right now. Banks has drawn directly upon black gay culture, such as the film Paris is Burning in her music. Under the moniker Miss Banks, she released her debut recording, Give Me a Chance, online on November 9th in 2008. The recording was accompanied by the self-produced track 17, which sampled the Lady Tron song of the same name. Banks sent both tracks to American DJ Diplo. Later that year, she signed a development deal with record label XL Recordings and began working with producer Richard Russell in London. In September 2011, Banks released her debut C in 2012 and Slay Z in 2016. A studio album broke with expensive taste in 2014 and two extended plays 1991 in 2012 and Icy Colors Change in 2018. In 2017, Banks had her film debut in the musical drama Love Beats Rhyme as portraying the lead character. Banks' works have garnered acclaim, critics drawing on various sounds including house, rap, pop, electronic music, and avant-garde. Banks' first EP, first EP, 1991, was released in the UK on May 28th and in the US the next day. 
The four track EP, which includes 212, was not eligible for the UK albums chart, but the title track numbered at number 79 on the UK singles chart. It also reached number 133 on the US 200, while reaching number 17 on the US R&B hip hop chart, number 12 on the US rap chart, and even strong on the US heat chart. In 2013, 19 num- 1991 was certified gold by the Australian Recording Industry Association. Early in 2012, Banks revealed that her debut album would be called Broke with Expensive Taste and that it would include contributions from musicians including Toko Yashida, Theo Fearless London, Kevin Hussein, and Ariel Pink. She initially said the album's lead single would be a track titled Miss Amore and that it would be accompanied by a B-side Miss Camaraderie both produced by loan but these plans changed in january 2013 she announced that the first official single from the album would be young rapunzel which was released in march 2013 on soundcloud broke with expensive taste is a brilliant psychedelic trip that treats genre like an all-you-can-eat buffet it's a shiny intricate mess of hip house r&b uk garage dubstep trap dance pop bachata, jazz, drum and bass, etc. The label wanted something with mainstream appeal, but Banks had instead sent out to make an album that was anti-pop. The project, like the artist, resisted easy categorization. Somehow she managed to get out of the deal with all of her songs and released the album with Prospect Park, a cartoon brown-skinned mermaid with the long aquamarine hair on the cover of her 2012 mixtape, Fantasy. The character resonated with the nautical, afro-futuristic aesthetics of Detroit techno duo, Drexia, but Banks said she hadn't heard of them when she adopted their C-Punk look. I was blown away when I found them because here you are, here you had these two guys creating a myth around slaves who were thrown off slave ships and then grew gills and evolved so their bodies could survive in those conditions. And I was like, nah, we're tapped in. All music geniuses are tapped into some pre mordorial database of knowledge that exists in the subconscious of the penile gland she says her laughter dissolving into inertness it gave me the sense of validation knowing there were other people who felt like that after leaving xl recordings banks dropped the miss banks moniker and formally became azalea banks i got turned off on the music industry and disappeared for a bit i went into a bit of depression banks moved to montreal using youtube as a portal she uploaded several demo tracks including later and a cover of slow hands by interpol after her canadian visa expired banks returned to new york where she sold keychains at a manhattan jazz club and danced at a queen's strip club to make ends meet that's when i was really depressed Banks said i don't have a manager i don't have a boyfriend i don't have any friends i don't have any money here i am working at the strip club trying not to say the wrong thing and get into fights with these girls who don't give a fuck long beach rapper vince staples had last spring with a reporter at complex said who made a casual reference to the rap game but what's the game asked staples with a knowing smile a game implies winners and losers in the business of music there's an impression around label executives that they're giving that they're giving artists an opportunity so there could be no complaints about anything as base as project ownership they didn't call any other genre the game said staples they call the rap game the rap game because there's a bunch of niggas running around and they don't want to give black people shit on January 31st in 2018, Blanks announced that she had signed a U.S. $1 million record deal with Entertainment One. On March 9th in 2018, she released Moving On Up to iTunes and other streaming platforms as the second promotional single from Fantasy Second, The Second Wave. The song was previously featured in the 2017 film Love Beats Rhymes, which Banks starred in. In March 2018, she announced that the first official single from her forthcoming album will be In the Winter. It was released on April 6, 2018, and the official music video for the single was released on May 24, 2018. On July 6, a second single, Treasure Island, was released. In November, Banks announced on her Instagram account that she will release the christmas theme EP, I See Colors Change, on December. A demo of the title track was released in December 2017. The project was released on December 19 after several delays with a promotional single, What Are You Doing New Year's Eve, released on December 13th. Another proportional single from Fantasy Second, The Second Wave, Playhouse, was released exclusively on SoundCloud on April 12th in 2007 on April 12th in 2019. Banks first teased the track back in 2016 by playing the entire song on the live streaming app Periscope. All music characterizes Banks as a stylish vocalist who combines hardcore hip-hop, indie pop, and dance music. 
Meanwhile, The Guardian's John Robinson considered Banks style an appealing blend of Missy Elliott and dance pop. In regards to her musical style, Banks has frequently been noted for the use of profanity in many of her songs, particularly her reclamation of the word cunt. Examples including her debut single 212 in which she used the word more than 10 times or other songs such as Fierce in which she refers to herself as a cunt queen. Banks attribute this to her upbringing in Harlem saying, I'm from Harlem. I went to art school. I grew up with the cunts and that term doesn't come from me. People think I have invented it, but I didn't. To be cunty is to be feminine and to be like aware of yourself. Nobody's fucking with that inner strength and delicateness. The cunts, the gay men adore that. My friends would say, oh, you need to cunt it up. You're being too bangy. Banji means unrefined and rough. You need your cunts. They fix your hair for you and do your makeup. They give you confidence and give you life. She is also known for her often fast pacing rapping or flow. In a review of Banks' debut EP 1991, Chris Darts of Exclaim found Banks' rapping speed remarkable, commenting that she manages a feat that takes most rappers the better part of a career to master, the perfect marriage of banging club-friendly beats and smart, crispy, delivered lyrics. Since writing 212, Banks has adopted an alter ego, Young Rapunzel. This alter ego was adopted from Banks calling herself Rapunzel due to a long weave she wore while working at Starbucks as a teenager. Banks discussed this with Rolling Stone, saying, Young Rapunzel was that girl who pisses people off but doesn't really mean to. She's actually a sweetheart, but people are so taken aback that she saw herself. She's not even trying to be unique or different. She literally just lives in her head. She does what she wants to do. So the lipstick is here for anyone that's happy to be themselves. There was a point in time when Azalea Banks was a promising young new face on the blog with her pick of the litter on record deals. A wide-eyed LaGuardia dropout getting flown out to perform at Karl Lagerfeld's birthday party in Paris. A 21-year-old force of nature with all-star cosigns from hip-hop legends like Nas saying she has incredible star power, the total package. And a then still golden Kanye West who early on was keen to sign her. There was no shortage of industry professionals who would have publicly proclaimed Banks as the future of music. She seemed inevitable. Banks' discography is playful and energetic and deeply original. It has the gilded sheen of invincibility. It's brash, rouchy, intoxicatingly confident. She's a technical wordsmith who foregrounds cleverness and arranges her verses with a preternatural ear for nursery rhyme assonance that doubles down on its often nonsensual juvenile humor. On her latest single, New Bottega, which had everyone in their gay mother yelling, New Bottega, Prada da, Banks affects an Italian accent over a thumping electro clash beat, lovingly reciting a list of high fashion labels before delivering a characteristically bankish bar. I put the boy in the Galliano, now he's a fucking model. I'ma make him famous, rename him. I'm icing out his chain and I'm still gripping the stainless. Stay dangerous, cause most of these is brainless. She's always at home on any house beat, but Banks is always impressively chameleonic. She can glide from acid house, post disco to surf rock, and all within the space of a single track. I make up my own genres a lot of time. She tells with casual indifference. Say what you will about her. The only person who sounds like Azalea Banks is Azalea Banks. There was a point in time when Azalea Banks was... She works against trends, smuggling into hip-hop her glittery... Her glitchy, rave-friendly sounds with such rhetoristic ease that you forget to question how bizarre the sounds really are. I do have some house songs, but a lot of majority is technically electronic music, and people really go gloss over how great of a traditional rapper I am, she says. I've done everything. I'm singing opera on JFK. I'm doing Dimbao on Sal Chishion. I'm doing Bossa Nova with the cover on Chega D. Saudi. I put out a Christmas record. I just like music. Banks is known for publicly speaking out on African-American civil rights issues with the commenter at Splice Today describing her as having that hot New York temper where she just pop off if you cross her the wrong way. In December 2014, she called for over a hundred trillion to be paid to African-Americans as financial reparations for the enslavement of their ancestors, citing U.S. reparations to Native American communities and the German reparation to Jewish survivors of the Holocaust as precedents. On Twitter, she urged young African-Americans to take an interest in such issues, adding, we are the children of the people who perish in the name of modern capitalism and we deserve a piece of the effing pie. She added that reparations could be used to improve educational prospects for black Americans. Banks identifies as bisexual. During the few instances where she had discussed her sexuality with the press, she has expressed dissatisfaction with society's labeling of others based on sexual orientation. In an interview 
with the New York Times, she said, I'm not trying to be like the bisexual lesbian rapper. I don't live on other people's terms. The category is Act Two, House. House is a genre of electronic dance music characterized by a repetitive four on the floor beat and a typical tempo of 120, 130 beats per minute as a re-emergence of 1970s disco. It was created by DJs and music producers from Chicago's underground club culture and evolved slowly in the early mid 1980s as DJs began altering disco songs to give them a more mechanical beat. By early 1988, House became mainstream and supplanted the typical 80s music beat. One of the main influences of House was disco. House music having been defined as a genre which picked up where disco left off in the late 1970s. Like disco DJs, House DJs use a slow mix to link records together into a mix. In the post-disco club culture during the early 1980s, DJs from the gay scene made their tracks less pop-oriented with a more mechanical, repetitive beat and deeper bass lines, and many tracks were made without vocals or with wordless melodies. Disco became so popular by the late 1970s that record companies pushed even non-disco record artists, R&B and soft rock acts, for example, to record disco songs. When the backlash against disco started, known as Disco Demolition, demolition night held in chicago ironically the city where house music would be created a few years later dance music went from being produced by major labels to being created by djs in the underground club scene that is until several years later by 1988 when major labels would begin signing acts from this new dance genre while disco was associated with lush orchestration with string orchestra flutes horn sections, various disco songs, incorporated sounds produced with synthesizers and electronic drum machines, and more compositions were entirely electronic. Examples, including Italian composer Giorgio Mordier, late 1970s projections such as Donna Sonmer's hit single I Feel Love from 1977, Kraftwerk's The Man Machine album from 1978, Serone's Super Nature 1977, Yellow Magic Orchestra Sync Disco Pop Productions from Yellow Magic Orchestra in 1978 or Solid State Survivor in 1979, a several early 1980s production by high NRG groups like Lime, Trans X, and Bobby O. Also important for the development of house were audio mixing and editing techniques, earlier produced by disco garage music and post-disco DJs, record producers and audio engineers such as Walter Gibbings, Tom Mutin, Jim Borges, Larry Lee Van, Eminem, and others. House has a large influence on pop music, especially dance music. It was incorporated into works by major international artists, including Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Janet Jackson, Madonna, Pet Shop Boys, Kylie Minogue, Lady Gaga, and produced many mainstream hits such as Pump Up the Jam by Technotronic, French Kiss by Lip Lewis, Show Me Love by Robin S., and Push the Feeling On by the Nightcrawlers. Many house DJs also did and continue to do remixes for pop artists. House music has remained popular on radio and in clubs while retaining a foothold on the underground scenes across the United States. House was created and pioneered by DJs and producers in Chicago such as Frankie Knuckles, Ron Hardy, Jess Saunders, Chip E., Joe Smooth, Stee, Slick Hurley, Farley Jack Master Funk, Marshall Jefferson, Future, and others. House music initially expanded internationally to London, then to other American cities such as New York City, and ultimately a worldwide phenomenon. One book from 2009 states the name House Music originated from a Chicago club called The Warehouse that was open from 1977 to 1982. Clubbers of The Warehouse were primarily black gay men who came to dance music played by the club's resident DJ, Frankie Knuckles, who fans refer to as the godfather of house. Frankie began the trend house music pioneers Alan King, Robert Williams, and Derek Carter of splicing together different records when he found that the records he had were not long enough to satisfy his audience of dancers. After the warehouse closed in 1983, eventually the crowds went to Knuckles' new club. The Power House later to be called the Power Plant, and the club was renamed yet again into a music box with Ron Hardy as a resident DJ. The 1986 documentary House Music in Chicago by filmmaker Phil Randstorm captured opening night at the powerhouse and stands as the only film or video to capture a young Frankie Knuckles in this early era, right after his, after his departure from the warehouse. In the Channel 4 documentary Pump Up the Volume, Knuckles remarks that the first time he heard the term house music was upon seeing We Play House Music on a sign in the window of a bar on Chicago's south side. 
One of the people in the car joked, you know, that's the kind of music he played down at the warehouse. In self-published statements, Southside Chicago DJ Leonard Remix Roy claimed he had put such a sign in a tar van window because it was where he played music that one might find in one's home. In his case, it referred to his mother's soul and disco records, which he worked into his sets. House tracks typically involve a intro, a chorus, various verse sections, a mid section, and a brief outro. Some tracks do not have a verse taking a vocal part from the chorus and repeating the same cycle. House music tracks are often based on eight bar sections, which are repeated. They are often built upon bass heavy loops or bass lines produced by a synthesizer and or around samples of disco, soul, jazz, funk, or funk songs. DJs and producers creating a house track to be three and a half minute radio edit is used. House tracks built up solely, but adding layers of sound and texture and by increasing the volume, house tracks may have vocals like a pop song, but some are completely minimal instrumental music. If a house track does have vocals, the vocal lines may also be simple, words or phrases that are repeated. Early house lyrics contain generally positive uplifting uplifting messages but spoke especially to those who were considered to be outsiders especially african americans latinos and the gay subculture the house music dance scene was one of the most integrated and progressive spaces in the 1980s the black and gay populations as well as other minority groups were able to dance together in a positive environment house music djs aimed to create a dream world of emotions with stories keywords and sounds which helped to glue communities together Many house tracks encourage the audience to release themselves or let yourself go, which is further encouraged by the continuous dancing, incessant beat, and use of club drugs, which will create a trance-like effect on dancers. Some house lyrics contain messages calling for equality, unity, and freedom of expression beyond racial or sexual differences. Can you feel it by Fingers in 1987 or Follow Me by Al Us in 1992? Later on in the 1990s, independently from the Chicago scene, the idea of peace, love, and dancing are associated with early house music. Jacking, footwork, and lofting. These styles include a variety of techniques and substyles, including skating, stomping, voshu, pouncing cat, and shuffle steps. House music dancing styles can include movements from many other forms of dance, such as whacking, voguing, caparilla, jazz dance, lady hop, lindy hop, tap dance, and even maunder dance. House dancing is associated with... The category is... ballroom scene, also known as a ballroom community, ballroom subculture, or just ballroom, is an African-American and Latino underground LGBTQ subculture. Its origins can be often can be found in drag balls of the mid-19th century United States, such as those hosted by William Dorsey Swan, a formerly enslaved black man in Washington, D.C., by the early 20th century, integrated drag balls were popular in cities such as New York, Chicago, New Orleans, Baltimore, and Philadelphia. In the mid 20th century, as a response to racism in integrated drag spaces, the balls evolved into house ballroom, where black and Latino attendees could walk in a variety of categories for trophies and cash prizes. Most participants contestants in a ball at the National Museum of African Art In 2016, and ballroom belonged to groups known as houses, where chosen families of friends form relationships and communities separate from their families of origin, from which they may be estranged. The influence of ballroom culture can be seen in dance, language, music, and popular culture, and the community still exists. In the 1880s, drag balls became a popular gathering space for people living different gendered lives. William Dorsey Swan, the first person known to describe himself as a drag queen, hosted secret balls in Washington, D.C., Many of the attendees were black men, and Swan himself was a formerly enslaved person. Swan and other attendees were arrested and police raids numerous times, but the balls continued. By the 1890s, drag events were also being organized in New York City, and by 1930, racially integrated public drag balls in Chicago, New Orleans, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and other cities were bringing hundreds of cross-dressing and gender non-conforming individuals together and attracting large crowds. Use of family terms such as mother to denote rank among ball participants were recorded in the early 20th century and phrases such as strike a pose. Participants were recorded in the early 20th century and phrases such as Starka Pose and Vogue can be traced back to the early days. As the 20th century progressed, 
Organizations advocating for transgender rights were established and community spaces for organizations advocating for transgender rights were established and community spaces for LGBTQ people grew in number, but many were white dominated and exclusive, though drag balls were often integrated. Black performers faced racism at balls, leading to the rise of black balls in the 1960s. In 1972, Harlan drag queens Lottie and Crystal LaBeja founded the first house, the House of LaBeja. The drag balls evolved into house ballroom, and the ballroom scene, black and Latino drag performers could achieve glory, find surrogate families, and feel a sense of belonging. Miss Major, who came out as a transgender in her teens in the late 1950s, Chicago, was part of African-American drag ball culture, describes the balls in a 1998 interview. New York City is the center of the world's drag ball culture. Cross-dressing balls have existed in the city since the 1800s. The Hamilton Lounge Ball in 1869 as the first recorded drag ball in the U.S. history. In the 1980s, female impersonators competed in fashion shows and bars two or three times a year. Black queens would sometimes participate but rarely won prizes due to discrimination. In 1989, the House of Latex was created as a call to action in the ballroom community to bridge the gap between HIV and STI prevention and ballroom culture. Some regular house parties became institutionalized as drag houses and families. The leader or mother often provided not only the opportunity for parties but also instruction and mentoring and the art of makeup, selecting clothes, lip syncing, portraying a personality, walking and related skills. Those taught became drag daughters who in turn mentored others, creating entire drag families. Drag houses became the first social support groups in the city's gay and lesbian community. House names often came from addresses of the house mother, such as the mother Billy Bond Hills, Belmont House at 15th in Belmont Northwest, or associations with the mother's chosen personality as Ma'am Dennis's Beekman Place. Houses are led by mothers and fathers who are experienced members of the ballroom scene, typically drag queens. Gay men are transgender women who provide guidance and support for their house children. The children of houses are each other's siblings. All houses were founded in U.S. cities, mostly in the Northeast. These categories, these include New York City, New York, Jersey City, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, as well as Chicago and Oakland, California. Houses that win trophies and gain recognition through years of participation, usually 10 years, reach the, reach the rank of legendary. Houses with 20 years of participation are deemed iconic. Typically, house members adopt the name of their house as their last name. Those currently not in a house carry the last name 007. To compete against each other, houses walk a felicia of categories at a given ball. Participants dress according to the guidelines of the category in which they are competing. These guidelines are created by promoters of a ball and may slash may not adhere to an overall theme for the ball. Regardless, participants are expected to display appropriate adherence to the rules of a category. Balls rank in scale for many balls, typically characterized by a small selection of categories. Few people walking in a runtime of one to two hours to mainstream events, characterized by the presence of most, if not all, characterizes in ballroom. A specific a significant number of participants for each category in a runtime exceeding four hours with the largest of balls capping at eight hours. Contestants walking towards the judges at a ball in Berlin in 2018. Categories are split into demographics of the participants. Flyers will always tell contestants how each category will be demographically divided. These, these demographics are Femme queens, trans women, butch queens, gay men, trans men, trans men, drags, gay men and drags, women, cisgender women, butch, cisgender women who present as a male, male figure, the collection of butch queens, trans men and butches, female figure, the collection of femme queens, drags and women, open to all, the collection of all demographics. Some categories include voguing, use the vogue element of hands, catwalk, duck walk, Floor performance, spins, and dips. The voguing category has the following variants. Virgin Vogue. Vogue participants who have been voguing for less than one year. Beginner's Vogue. Vogue category for participants who have been voguing for less than two years. Hand performance. Judged on a participant's mastery of the hands elements. Using the hands to tell a story. Old way, judged on participants' ability to perform the original style of Vogue game made popular in the 80s. New way, judged on participants' ability to perform the updated version of the old way, characterized by arm control and flexibility.
FQ realness, judge on participants' ability to blend in with cisgender women. BQ realness, judge on participants' ability to blend in with male heterosexuals. The category of BQ realness. Notable houses in the ballroom scene are the House of Aviance, founded by Mother Juan Aviance, the International House of Chanel, founded by R&R &R Chanel in 1976, the House of Omni, co-founded by Kevin Omni in 1979, the iconic House of Valor, founded in Washington, D.C. in 1989 by Father Al Allure, the House of Balenciaga, founded by Harold Balenciaga, the House of Dupree, founded by Paris Dupree, the House of Ebony, founded by Larry Prelau Ebony and Richard Fears Ebony. The House of Ferre, founded by Jasmine Alexander Ferre. The House of Garçon, founded by Whitney and Sharon Garçon. The House of Juicy Couture, founded by Courtney Balenciaga. The House of Ladocia, founded by La Femme de Ladocia and Conti Crawford. The House of Latex, the House of Lauren, the House of Maison Margiela, founded by Vinnie Margiela. The House of Mizrahi, founded by Andre Mizrahi. The legacy of ball culture on current drag culture is extensive. The use of categories and judging can be seen on popular reality TV programs such as RuPaul's Drag Race. The structure of houses is widely used among drag queens today, as well as associated with notions of community and family. Attitudes of defiance and subversion that were necessary for black, Latino, queer, and trans participants as they navigated discrimination, exclusion, and the ravages of the AIDS epidemic form an essential part of drag culture as a whole. Ballroom dialect became more widely used in gay slang. Fashion industry, garçon, and mainstream colloquial language. Reading to read a person is to highlight and exaggerate all of the flaws of a person, from their ridiculous clothes to their flawed makeup and anything else the reader can come up with. It is a battle of wit, in which the winner is the one who gets the crowd to laugh the most. Shade. Shade is an art form that developed from reading. Rather than aiming to assault through speaker, works with a medium of backhanded compliments. The category is... Beyonce Giselle's Noelle Carter Knowles, born September 4th in 1981, is an American singer, songwriter, and businesswoman, dubbed Queen Bee. She is regarded as a prominent cultural figure of the 21st century and has been recognized for her artistry and performances, with Rolling Stone naming her one of the greatest vocalists of all times. As a child, Beyonce started performing in various singing and dancing competitions. She rose to fame in the late 1990s as a member of the R&B girl group Destiny's Child, one of the best-selling girl groups of all time. The hiatus saw the release of Beyonce's debut album, Dangerously in Love, in 2003. She then followed with U.S. number one solo albums, B-Day in 2006, I Am, Sasha Fierce in 2008, and 4. Beyonce achieved critical acclaim for the experimental visual albums Beyonce released in 2013 and Lemonade released in 2016, which explored themes such as feminism and womanism. With her black queer inspired dance album Renaissance released in 2022 and country album Cowboy Carter in 2024 from her trilogy project, she became the only female artist to have all of her solo studio albums debut at number one on Billboard. Renaissance, also referred to as Act One, is the seventh studio album by American singer and songwriter Beyonce. It was released on July 29th in 2022 by Parkwood Entertainment and Columbia Records. Her first solo studio release since Lemonade in 2016 and the first installment by her trilogy project, Beyonce, wrote and produced the album with Nova Wave, The Dream, Symbolic One, A.G. Cook, Honey Dijon, Bean, Tricky Stewart, Blood Pop, Skrillex, Hit Boy, Grace Jones and Timms appear as guest vocalists. Beyonce's sound inspiration in post-1970s black ball culture, dance music, and club culture. Beyonce noted that she was largely introduced to this culture by her uncle Johnny, her gay cousin, who helped raise her until his death during the AIDS epidemic. Further, she wanted the album to be a celebration of the underappreciated pioneers of dance music, whose contributions have been unrecognized in the mainstream media. I had no idea what type of genre I would end up writing, signing for Renaissance, but I tried to stay open and open my palette and discover aspects of myself or create something new. I always wanted to make a record that I could work out to. That's a little bit over an hour and, th and it's exactly that. It just makes you want to move. It makes you want to dance. It makes you want to laugh. It makes you want to fall in love. And it makes you want to be with your man or your woman. It makes you just want to have some joy and have some fun. And that's really all I wanted to do. I felt like that was my mission and that was my assignment. I was inspired by so many incredible artists. I knew it was going 
I knew if I was going to do an album that had dance music elements, I would have to make it my own and mix a few things together. So I think it has elements of disco, techno, electronic, and soul, and still some elements of hip hop. I wanted to give myself permission to just have fun. That's the goal, because I definitely have fun recording it. Beyonce said in the audio speech at the Club Renaissance 2022 party. Renaissance was heavily inspired by Studio 54. Beyonce wanted to challenge listeners with songs of longer length, bridges and vaps, and melodies in a musical landscape where it was lacking. Thick was originally made in 2014, but did not fairly materialize until eight years later on the album. Renaissance is an innovative and playful approach to genre, blending and shifting between several styles, primarily various genres of post-1970s black dance music. Described as a dance house disco pop, Beyonce collaborated with several progenitors of dance music on the album, such as Now Rogers. Its songs incorporate elements of a wide variety of subgenres, namely bounce, Detroit techno, reggaeton, garage, Afrobeats, boogie, funk, gospel, Miami bass, psychedelic soul, hip hop, trap, New Jack Swing, Jersey Club, Chicago House, Deep House, Electronic House, Hip House, Synth Pop, Hyper Pop, Dance Hall, and New Disco. The tracks are connected by a seamless transition facilitated by beach by beat matching, evoking a DJ mix. This reflects the shifting moods and the physicality of the dance floor, rather than the constraints of a radio station or a playlist, according to the New York's Carrie Baton. Some tracks also have unconventional song structures, containing multiple tempos and movements. Lyrically, the Renaissance contains themes of escapism, self-assurance, self expression, Hinduism, and pleasure, with Beyonce expressing joy and confidence in listeners. According to The Guardian, it urges listeners to wholeheartedly embrace pleasure, and particularly referencing joy in black culture. The album's lyrics emphasize dance as both a measure of personal catharsis and liberating. I'm That Girl contains elements of Still Pimpin' written by Tony Me Wright III and Andre Summers performed by Tommy And performed by Tommy Wright III and Princess Loco. Break by Break My Soul contains elements of Show Me Love, written by Aline George and Fred McFarland, and performed by Robin S. Contains a sample of Explode, written by Freddie Ross and Adam Pickett, and performed by Big Freedom. American singer Crystal Waters, who helped make house music mainstream in the 1990s, said she was ecstatic when she heard Beyonce's new music and expressed gratitude for how she is shining a light on underappreciated house singers. Chicago house DJ Ron Carroll described Renaissance as a trailblazing album that has reintroduced house music to the radio and encouraged other musicians to follow Beyonce's lead. Alana Francis of English electronic music duo Alana George lauded Renaissance for its impact on dance music and its black creators. Francis explained that throughout her career, she had hope and fought for the widespread recognition of black musicians placed in dance music. Francis wrote that this revolution has now occurred following the release of Renaissance, with Beyonce breaking stigmas and declaring that dance music is black music, in turn encouraging listeners to reflect on the visibility and exploitation of blackness within dance genres. Francis added that Renaissance could greatly benefit the investment and growth of communities around the world, which allow black dance music to thrive. Other musicians also praised the album for its impact in musicology. British singer-songwriter Ellie Goldie said that her up, then-up-and-coming album, Higher Than Heaven, is a dance and house album in the same vein as Renaissance, with Beyoncé taking those genres to a global level. She later said that Renaissance restored her faith in pop music after the genre was heading in a bad direction. American singer SZA said that the album was the biggest risk a mainstream artist had taken in recent years. On February 1st, in 2023, Beyonce announced the Renaissance World Tour via her Instagram account. The concert ran between May 10, 2023 at Friends Arena in Stockholm. It is her first solo tour since the Formation World Tour in 2016. The tour quickly received widespread acclaim, with Rolling Stone dubbing it a once-in-a-lifetime show. When Renaissance was first released, Beyonce stated through a press release that she wanted fans to focus on the music rather than any visual components, but confirmed that visuals were eventually forthcoming. On August 9th in 2022, Beyonce released a teaser video for the album's open track, I'm That Girl, that included a rap montage of over 20 outfits that news outlets interpreted as previewing the various impending music videos for each track on the album. Some scenes included Beyonce recreating Mao, Moi Renee performing her 1992 song Miss Honey, Beyonce and two dancers fronting La Conversion de St. Paul, and Beyonce in a hedge maze labyrinth. 
Nine months later, Beyonce embarked on the album's campaign tour on May 10th in 2023. Part of her tour visuals additionally included a message stating that although fans were demanding visual, a queen moves at her own pace. During her concert in Louisville, Kentucky on July 17, 2023, Beyonce addressed a fan sign inquiring about the visuals, responding, you are the visuals, baby. Jeff Snyder of A Boy of the Lion reported on August 31st in 2023 that a visual album for Renaissance directed by Nadia Lee Cohen was secretly film and is being shopped to various studios and streamers he described it as an art film that is weirder than beyonce's previous works lemonade and black king the last show the renaissance world tour at arrowhead stadium in kansas city missouri on october 1st in 2023 closed out with a trailer for renaissance a film by beyonce released on december 1st in 2023 the film features highlights from the tour and documentary footage from the development of both the album and the tour beyonce conceived and recorded Renaissance during the COVID-19 pandemic, seeking to inspire joy and escapism in listeners who had experienced isolation and to celebrate a club era in which marginalized people sound liberation through dance music. The album debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 chart. Beyonce's seven consecutive albums to do so and is certified platinum. It has also reached number one in Australia, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Ireland, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. The platinum certified lead single, Break My Soul, was released on June 20, 2022. The album received universal acclaim from the music critics for its electric yet cohesive sound, joyous released joyous mood and beyonce's vocal performance it has became the best rated album 2022 named the album of the year of the of the name album of the year by publications such as the loss los angeles times the new york times pitchfork and rolling stone which would later place the record at number 71 on the 500 greatest albums of all time list 31 renaissance Scratch the 31. Renaissance and his songs garnered nine nominations after the 65 annual Grammy Awards, including Album of the Year, and won four awards, including Best Dance slash Electronic Album, making Beyonce the most awarded artist in the Grammy Awards history. And that is the conclusion. I hope you guys learned so much from the Azalea Banks and being able to see how all of these musicians, all of these genres, all of these different cultures create the dance and house music today. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn those post notifications. And I'm so happy that you guys stuck around to watch. Mm -hmm.